Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys join me for morning prayer. Um, I did it once, and it got a pretty good, pretty positive response. I love praying scripture. Um, you, it seems to me like you get more connected to God in your in your prayer. So what I try to do when I'm doing prayer is I try to pr uh, let the Spirit lead my prayer. So it comes from a place of love, a place from emotion. It comes from my heart. Because a prayer just said, because you're repeating a prayer, means nothing. But if your driving force behind your prayer is love or sorrow or, or confusion, you know, there's emotion to it. There's power in that emotion. And God listens to that. Those prayers mean a lot because there's something behind it. You, there's something driving it. Anyone can fake a prayer, but to mean a prayer, that means something. And I've covered this in videos that your emotion about something, your driving force behind something is far greater than what you say. A lot of people have accused me, you don't pray right. You don't like the way you pray. But when I pray, I pray with a deep sense of appreciation, a deep sense of, of fear and respect for God. Um... And in the scriptures, he says he likes that stuff. He, he, he looks very favorably upon those with a broken spirit, those with a contrite heart, a, a sorrowful heart. Because I know, I know what I am. I know I'm broken flesh. I know I make mistakes. And I feel bad about making those mistakes now that I'm a Christian. And I know what these mistakes are. And it kills me. I may still make a mistake, but I feel terrible about it. And I confess it because I don't want to make those mistakes anymore. I want to be holy, but only he can make me that way. I can't do it. If I could do it, we didn't need Jesus to come die for us. But a lot of people miss the mark on this because they don't dig into the scriptures deep enough. They don't want to learn about these things. They just believe what somebody else tells them. With that being said, and, and as a res this is a result of yesterday, yesterday evening, and it wasn't just the things I covered in the video. There was things that happened during the day that I covered that were very... Not just yesterday. I could actually go back a ways. It's frustration. Frustration and disappointment. And I've shared this with you guys a couple of times. And because of things that I see, um, things that I hear people saying, things that I see people doing, and their reactions to things, their responses to things. And it's like, ugh, how is this happening? And you try to share the truth about these things. You try to get the information out. And it falls on deaf ears. You know, I've, I'm, on, I'm coming up on 500 videos since the beginning of the year, and I've covered, like, pick a subject, I've probably covered it, um, and I've shared scripture about this, I've given information about this, and it, it seems like it's received initially, and then it's forgotten, um, and there's a lot of people out there that I watch that I respect that aren't seeing things that are coming, they'll see a lot of other things, but there's one thing in particular I'm very, very, I've been warning a lot about. And they don't think that what's coming is a danger. And I, I hope and pray we're taken before this is implemented fully. Because if it is and these people take this, they're condemned. And I don't want to see that happen. But that's a different video. So in John 16, 33, I'm going to cover frustration first. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. The things that we see and, and experience may cause us to be down, may cause us to be frustrated. But because we're in Christ and we put our faith and trust in him, he overcame the world already. And we're just waiting for our redemption from it. All we have to do is keep our eyes on him and we'll make it through. Isaiah 41.10, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is with us. Who can be against us? Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Don't turn away and don't give up. Hang in there. The rewards are far worth it. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. I just, just shared this. If a person is in that boat, it's because there's things they're dealing with that's, that's causing them to be there. And they're laying their trust on the Lord. And he has a special place in his heart for people who have gotten to that point. Now, a lot of people never make it to that point, And it could be for one reason or another.
but those who were there, he, he especially cares for because he came to this earth. He walked this earth. He experienced all these things. He knows how it affects him. And he knows how it, it affects us and, and is weary on us. Because from that place, there's a lot of love and appreciation and trust that we put in the Lord because of that place that we're at in our in our heart being crushed in spirit. First Peter 5, 7, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. I've told you guys this before. Let that burden go. This is why confession is such a good tool. Because when you realize you made a mistake, confess that mistake. If you feel bad about something, confess it. Um, when I'm upset about things that I'm seeing and it's getting me riled up, I take it to him. Lord, what do we do on this? How do I get, the, give me the right word so I can get this point across so they'll get it? Because I don't want to see them mess up. That's not between me, them, and God. It's between them and God. But he, he says, you know, Peter says, cast your anxieties onto him. He cares for you. He wants to take that burden. Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, does that mean you're going to have a really awesome life and everything's going to be good and nothing's ever going to go wrong? No. What that means is that even though you're dealing with trials and tribulations, and yes, people, we all who have I had this discussion with, we have been in trials and tribulations for 2,000 years. What do you think the martyrs martyrdom was back in Jesus' day when they killed all the apostles? What do you think the Dark Ages were? What do you think the Spanish Inquisition was? What do you think all the stuff we have is now? Where Christians are being killed constantly. Christians are being hated here. Constantly. We're under demonic attack. Constantly. That's trials and tribulations. So all y'all that think we have to go through the tribulation, go read the Bible. You're not reading it. You're not. I share more scripture in one video than you guys are reading in a week. Because there's no way that y'all can be reading that and getting a completely different understanding. Unless you're just seriously blind. Matthew 11, 28-29 Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I'm looking for that rest. Romans eight twenty eight, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Have you been called to be a Christian? Well, then you know that all the things that you go through work for that. It, and it could be a negative. Um, right now, my F-150 is has been wrecked and is in Austin waiting for a, a claim adjuster to come to it. My, 20, my uh, Silverado 2500 is broke down with a spun timing chain. And my Silverado 1500, which is my wife's brother's old truck, um, needs shocks and back brakes, um, so I can pass inspection. And I don't have the money right now to get that taken care of. I'm, I'm about to. Now, on the outside, and I have no other car other than my daughter's car, which I'm working on, to drive, but there's no AC in it. We've been over 100 for how, how long? <coughs> and the heat is an issue for me now because of the connective tissue disease. Now, on the outside, you see that, and it's like, oh, my gosh, you got to go through all kinds of stuff. But... The 2500 breaking down was a blessing in disguise because there was a part in there that needed to be fixed and now I'm, I actually get to fix two parts that were in there that needed to be fixed. It's going to be a better vehicle after I get done with this. The 1500 is a simple fix, but it's keeping me tied down because a whole bunch of people have been trying to drag me off to do other stuff and I don't have a truck available so I can't do it. The Ford getting wrecked, we actually owed on a loan on the Ford. The money that they're going to give us for the adjustment to fix the truck actually pays the loan off and fixes the truck at the same time. And we've been wanting to sell that truck. And we've been trying to get enough money out of it to sell, to um, pay off the loan. Well, now we don't have to worry about that. Now we can get it fixed, pay off the loan we have on it, and have it have it 100%, and then sell it and get rid of it for half of what we were trying to get for it. So we can move it out and make somebody a good deal. So all the things that seemed like they were bad actually have become good and they will work out good so when you look at that thing that's happened that you think is was a bad thing you got to look at it for what it is and see well maybe on the other end usually for a christian on the other end it comes out way better and that's what's going to happen um, I, i'll actually be able because of that wreck and because i'll be able to fix and sell that one and the other one um, i'm actually going to be able to pay off a couple of other things 
uh, because this is just getting me faster and faster out of debt, too. So, yeah, it works out to be a positive. Psalm 4, 4 through 5. Be angry, but do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts on your beds and be silent. Selah. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. What is a right sacrifice? Because uh, a lot of people, I think, confuse when they say offering a sacrifice that they're talking about offering an animal sacrifice. God didn't take pleasure in animal sacrifice. And when a lot, in a lot of cases, even in the Old Testament, when they're talking about offering an acceptable sacrifice, it's a sacrifice in here. It's a sacrifice of, of sorrow. It's a sacrifice of thanksgiving. It's a sacrifice of repentance. You know, these are the sacrifices that God takes joy in. It's in the Bible. Read it. That's actually in the scriptures. Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. So if we're acknowledging him, we become better. Well, how do we acknowledge him? We, there's a lot of ways to acknowledge him. Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. I covered this in a video. Sometimes the best thing we can do for our situation is not do anything. Just sit still, stand still, be quiet, and let God work. How did, um, when David was praying and God sent an answer with an angel to him, it took that angel 21 days to get to him. David had just had to be silent. He was wondering why it was taking so long, but it took 21 days for him to fight his way down there to him because Satan was blocking him. And that talks about the prince of, was it prince of Persia, I think? Um, and that is, that's actually, and it was actually referring to an angel, and which, is, which turned out to be Satan. Proverbs 3, 5 through, 6, 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. James 1.19, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. When I watch other people's videos or other people are teaching, I pay very close attention to what they're saying, especially now. Very, very, very close. <coughs> because it's important to do so. So he's covering about being frustrated and how to not be frustrated. If we do the things that I've just listed in these scriptures, that helps us not be frustrated. Still going to have it, but and Jeremiah 29 11 13. And I'll change the other subject for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. It's all about what's in the heart, guys. But if God is against there for us, who's against us? No one. He is always going to be there if you put your faith and trust in him. Now, if you try to do it yourself, and this is a process that happens. And we, we go out there and we try to do things and we make things happen. And I got this, that kind of stuff. And not realizing is that the less we try to do it and the more we put our faith and trust in him and let him lead us into it, he always comes out so much more, so much better. There's a lot of Christians that have realized this and they, they take everything in prayer. And it's important to, it's important to acknowledge God because he loves to take care of us. It's his desire. So if you're frustrated, turn it over to him. Shush. Turn it over to him. Give it to him. Now, overcoming disappointment. In Philippians 4, 6 through 7, because it's real easy to get dis disappointed nowadays. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. No matter how frustrated or how disappointed I get, I am always in awe of how God pads my heart against those things. Even though I still get them because of what I see and hear people say, and, and how disappointing and unfortunate it is that it's going that way. And the paths I see before other people, especially people in my life. He always pads my heart. And is says it's okay because I got this covered, and he'll let me be that way. But he'll show me things that'll bring me out of it. And usually it's something in the word or something I see in somebody's video, and everything changes. It's awesome to see it. Romans eight twenty eight says, 
And we know that for those who love God, oh, I already covered that one in the last one. Um, Colossians 3, 23, 25. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. So we don't have to worry about what these people are doing that's wrong. It's disappointing to see it. It's disappointing when they negatively affect our lives or we let them do it. But he will take care of it. And there's a day for that. We don't have to worry about those things. Um, I've really started to learn how to not focus and worry about that stuff and focus more on him and what he wants me to do and how I'm walking with him in my life. And I stop focusing on everyone else. Psalm 121, 1 through 8, a song of accents. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. So if he's there for us, even if we're disappointed, even if we're frustrated, he's there for us. Isaiah 40, 28, 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, is this a physical observation of these things? No. It's in here. Because the cares and the troubles of this world drag people down. But if you don't let that be an anchor to you and put your trust in the Lord, then when everybody else is doing that, you will come and rise above those things. And this can be this can involve a whole host of different aspects. But it's not it's not referring to the physical aspect. And a lot of people will want to read that into it. And of course, Psalm 23, 1 through 6, great one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows awesome very very awesome but david even though he walks through the valley of the shadow of death even though he's in disappointment even though he's in pain even though he's in sorrow he knows the lord is there for him hebrews 4 14 through 16 since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast our confession for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but one who in every aspect or every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need and i can't top that that's amazing and it's perfect we know that no matter what we go through jesus went through it before us jesus was also tempted the way we're tempted Jesus also experienced the same things we experience. He experienced the sorrow. He experienced the disappointment. He experienced the frustration. And that's throughout the New Testament. So he knows exactly what we're going through. Now the uniqueness of Jesus is that he was God and man. We are man and woman. So we were born of man and woman. He was born of God and woman. So he has a very unique perspective in that he didn't he wasn't he wasn't able to sin. And he was able to endure this, these things for us to be our sacrifice. Us being man and woman will never completely come out of it because sin is in the flesh. It's sealed into the flesh. So while we're in the flesh, we're still going to have sin. We can get better, but we can't completely come out of it. That's what Jesus is for. That's what he did was to give us the ability to get out of that sin. So if you're frustrated, be frustrated. If you're disappointed, be disappointed. I'm both of those things. 
But when you read the scriptures, you know that he's there with you. You're going to go through this. And if you are going through this and you're and because of a tax or whatever, that's a good thing. That's a blessing because he said that they did it to me first. If they did it to me and you love me, they're going to do it to you too. So we know this is all par for the course, but it's what's on the other end that's perfect. And that's what we're waiting for and that's what we're striving for. Not for what we're doing, not for what we can get out of this world. We're waiting for that blessed hope on the other side. And that day is approaching very quickly, super quickly. But quicker than I think a lot of people will realize. We are in that in that high watch time. We're about to hit that extremely high watch time. Look up, you guys. Read the scriptures. Analyze. Don't worry about other people. Analyze yourself. Make sure your walk is correct. Make sure you're on the right path. Because if you make sure you're on the right path, then everyone that sees you and sees what you're going through will see the light of God shining from you. They will see that light being put on the bushel. And they will recognize that. And they will also gain from that and they will also learn uh, want to seek out being better and you may even lead some people to christ with that because of that it, it's a huge thing it, it, it happens on a spiritual level but it's a huge thing so i love you guys if you're frustrated and you're disappointed know that i'm there right there with you and it is what it is but we keep driving on keep driving on to the end of the race run that race with me guys and let's cross that finish line together so we can all go stand before the Lord with our heads held high, knowing that we did the best we could. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I will see you guys in the next video.